Hello, everybody. Welcome to Slow Fashion Rebel. My name is Emily, and this is my lovely friend, Sophie. Uh, sorry, I usually pause and let you That's say fine. your name. That's fine. I like the introduction. <laughs> PIP over here. Um, we, this is a channel about knitting um, and crafting of other miscellaneous types. And I live in Brooklyn, New York, and Sophie I'm in Cheltenham, UK. Um, we met briefly while, not briefly, we met while <laughs> Sophie lived, Sophie and her husband lived in New York briefly, and we've been using this podcast to keep in touch with each other and you, our lovely viewers and friends. So welcome. It's been one month. Um, I had intended to do a floss tube in between our last two videos, but guess what? I got COVID. It finally happened. I got I'm COVID. Glad you're okay. I'm glad you're safe and healthy. Yeah. Um, me too. I was um, not that sick because I had had one dose of the vaccine. So I'm very grateful that that happened, but there was lots of like official hoops to jump through and, you know, like insurance forms to fill out for sick pay and that kind of thing. So that was um, a bit of a stressful experience anyway. And I was sick. So that was like the day that I was gonna do my floss tube. I was like sitting there like, why can't I get up and do something? Like, come on, Emily, get up. And then I started feeling like a little bit achy and a little bit hot on my forehead. And I was like, oh, that's why I can't get up. <laughs> I, I'm sick. And then, How lucky that you'd had your first yeah. vaccination. Yeah. Well, I mean, not lucky, but also luck. Cause I mean, yeah, it could have been so much worse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah vaccinations for the win. I know for the win for sure. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. What have you been up to? Um, what have I been up to? All sorts, mostly just furiously sewing on my quilt. It's been really nice weather here in the UK, like super sunny. You can see the sun is shining. Um, so just enjoying that. I finally be able to see some people. So I've been quite social actually because um, we now have more movement within the UK and though you can't still can't stay over places at night. It's been nice. I see my family, see some of my friends, make some plans. And I feel like the weather's helped with that. It's just lots of kind of like getting, I don't want to say getting back to normal because what is normal anymore, but just reconnecting, kind of getting in touch with people. Got Lucas here. He's now humping me because... <laughs> I'm sat on the floor. So he's been doing great. He's feeling frisky. He's feeling energized. He's ready. Um, and yeah, but mostly just avoiding all kinds of strangers because we still haven't got our vaccinations in the UK, in our particular area. So in some areas they're offering them to younger people because they've managed to get through all the other age groups. But in Cheltenham, they're still focusing on over 50s. Mm -hmm. um, before they move to our age group. So we're still just trying to be really careful and cautious. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, and pub gardens have reopened. And oh my God, I just feel like with the weather, people in the UK love to go to a pub and that has not been more evident than in the past couple of weeks. They have been heaving. Um, and Jake and I tried to go the other day, but because I hadn't booked like three weeks in advance, there was no spontaneity to it. And actually we said, we're probably better off just sat in our garden, not crammed in with loads of other people, um, getting a bit larry. I feel like people in the UK have sort of forgot they're like COVID. What was that thing that we're still avoiding? Mm -hmm. Bit of sand and we're all out. Um, that's like a small, I'm gonna stop ranting about that now. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's not, a didn't feel like a rant. Um, I'm glad I've been able to socialize a little bit. Yeah, it's nice. So just, good to see people I feel like I've forgotten how to socialize though and it's really tiring you must find this from 
being in the shop, but human interaction is exhausting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I uh, didn't have a very long um, period of quarantine, like not quarantine. I mean, I- You weren't off for very long. You were sort of no. even walking pretty much through the whole thing. It's just, it was just a couple of months in the beginning. And um, so I'm used to it, you know, and it's like, it's an interesting luxury that I have, even though like the, it's extremely incredibly stressful, like being, feeling like I'm forced to be out and about. I mean, I'm not literally forced, but I kind of have no choice because I need to earn the money and I mean, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's been really stressful, like having to go out in the world when I would rather not. But um, yeah. And when people talk about like how annoyed they are with having been at home for like months and months and months, I get a little like, do you know that's, that's a luxury actually, you know? Um, but on the other hand, I mean, I get it. And I also, do have the luxury of like having some interactions, you know, not every customer is amazing, but I feel like it is really nice to be able to chat yeah. to people. And they are also like most of the time really appreciative of being able to come in and like, it's like a fun, you know, errand yeah, for them. Treat. And so they're like really excited to chat about crafts and stuff. And that's, that's been a really nice thing. So. Um, it's nice to be nice to retail workers. Yes, please be nice to your retail workers. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Yeah. I was expecting you to be a lot more shocked when I told you I had COVID. I have to say, I'm sitting here. <laughs> I feel like it has been like New York. I feel like it's just been a matter of time. Like I'm amazed. Yeah. They, I'm almost kind of was thinking that no, I'm not surprised. I feel like I, in my head, I thought we, sorry, Lucas is speaking. I thought we'd already had it. We were just like, had no symptoms. Yeah. I thought that too for myself. But then I'm just, yeah, I'm just glad. I feel like I'm in some ways I'm not, cause you look so healthy now. I'm Thank you. glad. It's not like I'm seeing you. Right. In a right. Intense care or yeah. something. I don't know. It, just, it almost doesn't feel real. It's like, Annie looks so good. She's... Thank you. Your hair's glowing. Thank you. I'm trying, the, I'm trying the curly girl method. Do you... Do you well, you don't have... But I usually, like, straighten my hair, so I'm trying to, like, wear it curly. Yeah, I like it. Especially for, I say, summer. I mean, it's not really summer, but it's nearly summer. It's kind nearly. Of coming into those warmer, brighter months. Um, I forgot what I, I was going to say something, but I forgot. Oh, well. Um, have you been, you've been English paper piecing up a storm over there. Oh my God. Are you, should I show you? Should I just jump up to how far I got? To see what you're... I have to stand up. Yeah. Okay. Pull my jeans up. Essential. So I'm about three quarters of the way. <gasps> Whoa. Sophie, it's gorgeous. I don't know how far back to go. Yeah, so I've got um, two more strips, I think, to do. And then I've got to make half blocks at the top. So for example, this bit here is a half block, like this bit will be chopped off and this diamond will be chopped off. Mm -hmm. So it'll be sort of in this line. But yeah, I'm, I've been obsessed, Yeah, as you know. Just like fussy cutting. That's not a verb, but <laughs> now a storm. I love it so much. Thank you. I thought the colours are washing out a bit, but so I've got um orange, a bit more like orangey strawberry red mm -hmm. going into like some amber colours. And then purple is like the section I've got left to add on the bottom. So it's all laid out upstairs. I think 
Jake will be glad when I finish it because our spare bedroom is literally just like this is on the floor all the time because I'm like mm. I can't put it away because it's too hard for me to then like get right. everything back out and yeah decide where to put it. If you have the space, you might as well. It's so yeah. cool. I love all the placement, all the fuzzy cutting you've done. Thank you. I was speaking to um because I basically my mum then sent me a link, I think, the end of last week for the Festival of Quilts, which is in Birmingham in August. And you can sort of you can enter your quilt, but you have to have it finished by the 4th of June. And I was like, oh, that's a bit tight, like only a month. Like I could finish the quilt, I'll probably finish the quilt top in the next week or so. But then I, I was like, oh, it's probably a bit tight for the quilter to quilt it. Um, and I contacted the quilter. Um, you, um, I contacted a lady called Abigail and her quilting handle, I think it's called Cut and Alter. So she's based in the Cotswolds, so locally to me. Uh, my mother-in-law has used her before. She does really beautiful work. Check her out on Instagram, everyone. And she's like, oh, that's like, it's a bit tight. I've got loads of other stuff to go to do. So she's like, I definitely won't be able to do custom quilting, but I could potentially fit in like edge to edge quilting. Um, I said, no, that's okay. And I was like, you know, when you sit there, it's like three days ago, I didn't even know about this thing, the festival of quilts. And now I have my heart set on um, entering my quilt. And it's not necessarily even I want to win. I just think it'd be really cool to have it on display in the NEC mm -hmm. with like, loads of other people that mm -hmm. would be quite nice to like you know think maybe have a chance of winning something mm -hmm. even if it's like you know whatever and then I was like Sophie why are you getting obsessed about this and why and I said to Jake I was like oh do you think I should just get a different type of quilting he's like you've put all this work into it now and he's like you've been yeah. telling me for months how you don't want to rush it and you want to make sure the quilting was right because he's like you know it's your first quilt you're feeling a bit precious over it um, he's like, you can just enter it next year. And I was like, that's so true. Why am I now putting all this pressure on myself trying to get something finished for something I didn't know existed three days ago? So that's the, I was saying to Emily, I was doing lots of emailing. She was the other person I was emailing back saying, completely understand, like, I know I'm really last minute and I know I was last minute when I sent it. Can I just talk to you about the different quilting options? And because I've never made a quilt before, I would like to get her thoughts on it as well, because, so she offers edge to edge quilting, which is basically like you pick one design and then it covers, the design covers the entire quilt or semi-custom, which you get maybe two different patterns or something or completely custom, which is different all over. And as I said to her in my email, the reason I was thinking about getting custom quilting is because I've put all this time into the placement of like different patterns Absolutely. and it would be quite cool to have quilting that echoes the design and sort of brings more attention to all the different fussy cutting I've done rather than um, with edge to edge to be one thing over the it kind of, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like maybe it would detract from it. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, that was a very long sentence where I didn't take breath, but <laughs> I've got back to her and I kind of said to her, I'm in your hands, like open to some guidance on it. And also I want to consider the cost because obviously there'll be a completely different cost factor to both types of quilting. And it might be that though I want it custom quilted, the price of getting it done might be ridiculous. So it's sort of lots of things to weigh up. So basically yeah. I've decided not to rush it, take my time, get it right and have something that I really love at the end of it rather than trying to rush to get something finished. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased how it's gone so far. I've got more blocks in the kitchen to sew together. Yeah, so nice, like sitting outside in the sun, if you've got like a spare half an hour, just sort of whipping through, trying to attach these blocks together. Mm -hmm. it's really good. So you're doing it in strips, you said? So like you assemble a block and then- Yeah. You and then it goes into a strip and then you yeah so it's kind of so each it's hard to see but yeah so they're basically strips of hexagons mm -hmm. 
offset. So I've been doing maybe three hexagons together at a time, then sewing it, otherwise it becomes a bit unwieldy. Yeah. Um, so this is, Lucas has been <laughs> really annoying. Um, yeah, so I've got sort of two strips of hexagons left to go, or one and a half strips, because this is a unfinished strip here. But then, so some of the blocks I've or, I'd already made, like large, mm -hmm. and then some of the blocks are made up of three smaller blocks together. So then I've also been attaching these and then deciding what color diamonds to put in between them, sort of help blend the colors together. So that's sort of been what's taking up most time really is actually attaching these three together and then spending like 20 minutes going, oh, would this color work better here? Or would this color work better? Mm -hmm. um, I really like how actually with some of them, it almost makes like a different pattern yeah. by adding them together. You sort of yeah. get a different look. It's so cool. But yeah. I mean, I know it's mine, but I do really love it. I think it's just because I love the fabrics that I chose. Oh, yeah. Um, it's stunning, really. I mean, I've done like little things like I've tried to be like here where I've got all these tiny birds uh -huh. and they've got little fish with them. Oh. And I don't know, I've just, yeah. Try to have a bit of fun. There's lots of random stuff going on. We've got fish, we've got cats, we've got turtles. Ugh, Lucas is attacking me. <laughs> this is my life, everyone. <laughs> um, eggs, lions, all sorts. I think the blues, the, this sort of section, I think is my favorite, just because of the colors and the fabrics, which is weird. So I thought I'd like the pink section the best. But then I realized when I was laying out the blocks and the paper, you know, when you think, oh, I'm almost had a color bias in the teals and the greens, because I think in my head, I was like, oh, don't make too many pinks because you really like pink. And I went completely overboard. And I've got so many spare blocks, mini blocks in these colors because I just went totally the opposite direction, but that actually turned out to be the hardest ones to cut because I was like, oh, I love them all so much. Um, so I've literally got probably 12 mini blocks upstairs waiting for some other life. You might make them into a cushion or save them for another quilt or something. And then, yeah, so once you attach them together, so you keep the papers in until you attach that edge to another edge, and then you take all the papers out which makes it easier to sort of move around. And then I've got to go along and iron everything, press it all down. But because I, they've been basted, they're already pretty flat, it seems. Mm. Reporting back about my glue stick thing from last time, oh, yeah. normal print stick works really well and there was pretty much no difference. So oh, just cool. if anyone wondered. Did Alexa send you glue sticks? <laughs> Well, last time I was like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy these expensive, well, they're not even that expensive. I was like, I'm not gonna buy these so line glue sticks anymore because when you're glue basting, you really they go really quickly. And I was like, I've used up literally I've used like 20 or something. I was like, I haven't even finished the quilt. I was like, I'm just gonna buy cheap mini print sticks that's suitable for use on fabric. So I use a scotch ones and they worked really well they were literally a fraction of the price and i've used that one mini glue stick but so far that's a lot better um, yeah. they still peel off really well i've peeled the papers away from those um the only difference is the glue is clear whereas with the sew line it's blue so you can see where you've glued but if you're not bothered about that i would just say that normal fabric suitable print stick is absolutely fine, in my opinion. So in the US, we don't have, as far as I know, such thing as a print stick. It's like a, mi a mini glue stick. I'll show you. Okay. Let me crawl to this cupboard. Elmer's glue, because I have. It's just like a. Just 
just like a glue stick. Yeah. Yeah, just okay. that. So it's just called Frit stick, like colloquially? But yeah, I think there's, there's basically this brand called Prit Sticks. Everyone just calls them Prit Stick. Like band even this isn't right. We would call it in the UK. Because this is what exactly. I have. Just Elmer's glue. Snap. Cool glue. Mine is purple. Well, there you go. Yeah. That would work perfectly for English paper piece, Emily. You have no excuse. Everyone, I'm trying to get Emily into English paper piece because I know she would be obsessed. That's the problem. That's the problem. I've told you this before. That's the problem is I know I would be obsessed. And my ID. I'm gonna imagine this is like Michael Jackson. Moonwalk. <laughs> I have to close these to my way like all the fabrics then come spilling out. So I keep shoving the fabric I'm buying. But yeah, that is the crazy world of English paper piecing. And I've already been eyeing up my next project when this one finishes. I was going to ask, what have you, what is your so, um, I don't know how you say her name, but Willeen Hammerstein. Um, she's pretty big in the English paper piecing world. She's mm -hmm. most famous for the La Pass. I never know how you say it. La, La Passigli, Passigli, something like that quilt, mm. which is like this crazy big circles and stars. She's really inspired by Islamic art. If you can sort of imagine the, you know, you get those sort of like really beautiful Feeling. glass lines yeah. and things and all those kinds of basically imagine those shapes but just in quilts that's amazing um so that's sort of what she's most famous for and her quilt book four because she's written so many and she literally started her career when she was retiring and she's like on her fourth or fifth book that's like it's that's awesome. and she makes all the quilts in her book herself so i don't even know how long each book must take her to do because she's making this isn't even a full size quilt, this is a lap quilt. Ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, her fourth book, I think I might get and then make something from there just because I really like the designs in that particular one. It just feels more at my street. Though I love basically looking through Instagram. My, most of my time is spent looking through Instagram hashtags, trying to find English paper piecing patterns because I feel like it's harder to find them than normal quilt patterns. Like I've tried typing them into Google and it just seems to be less of a data, bit. perhaps less people do it or I don't know. Um, yeah. So if anyone knows like a good place to find loads of English paper pieces and patterns together, apart from the paper pieces actual website where you buy the little bits of paper from, that'd be really helpful. So yeah. Her fourth book looks amazing. I'm thinking of getting that, making something from that. And some, and then I have no further plans on colors or anything like that. Um, yeah, I can't stop now. I'm addicted, Emily. I'm addicted. Who would, can I just say, Sophie a year ago, she, you were like, oh, so you have to stick bits of fabric to bits of card, to then hand sew those bits of card together. And then I'd be like, no. Are you mad? And now well, I that's awesome. I mean, I think that's great. And I've loved seeing what you're, you've created. I remember when we first met and we were hanging out on your roof last summer and you were telling me about your mother-in-law being a quilter and how you liked her stuff, but you would like to, you know, see more modern colors and it's just like how your style is just a bit different and it's been really lovely to see like that yeah. be expressed you know from from you so yeah I'm happy for I think the words of Emily I'm never gonna make a quilt also left my mouth and now I'm using <laughs> it's amazing actually I think when you look through um it's the same with knitting I suppose as well you see things made in different yarns and 
um, but maybe to more of an extent in quilting because fabrics can have such a different look on exactly the same design. It's really cool absolutely, when you look at it and see how people have kind of taken it. Yeah. Lucas has become very playful. I've <laughs> hidden. He really all. wants your attention right now. Yeah. All right all day i've been able to do anything well i have been doing that's probably why it's been my chore days he's just like love me um have you what been, you been working on? doing any knitting um I have, but i'll show you in a second okay. i feel like i've hogged the floor with my quilting so i have to say i'm i kind of was thinking like, what am I going to show? Like, I don't really feel like I have been doing any knitting because when I got COVID also, like I was like really prepping to do my first floss tube. And so I was like really into cross stitching. I've been cross stitching a lot. And then when I got COVID, I was just like, Bleh. and you know, sort of in between knitting projects and like have lots of cross stitch projects. So I was just mainly doing that. But then I thought about it and I still have been knitting because I knit on the train when I go to work and um, I also am like really wanting to do this blanket. So I've still been knitting like as much, but these are not things that I would normally have shown yeah. because I really like showing and talking about garment stuff. And I'm like, why? I mean, why wouldn't I show this? It's like just, it. it's just as much knitting anyway. So I've been really focused on my blanket because I really want to get it done. I think I only have like 90 squares left or something, which is oh, so sounds like a lot, but it is like, I mean, I think this is like 500 and something squares. So. Anyway, it's not going to look a lot different than it did last time, but I did, I know that I did these two. I did this one and oh, this little tiny purple is like, um, one of the first balls of yarn that I ever bought in 2006. And I was sitting there like doing this with Tim and I was like, Tim, this is the first ball of yarn that I ever bought. And he was actually like, wow, you know, like, and, um, cool. it was just cool. I have, I have this thing where it's like, and I love it so much. I, for some reason, love this, but it's like not showing up quite as it's a little bit darker and more saturated and very like um, grape purple. It's kind of an unusual color that you don't really find as much these days. Like maybe you would find it more in the 90s or something. Actually kind of similar to my top. But um, so I love it so much. And I have this thing where it's like, you don't want to use it up because then it like goes away. But then I'm like, no, I'm going to love and have this blanket forever and ever. So it's not going anywhere. It's just going to be in my blanket anyway. Um, and so I did this, this one, this is from you. This is from you. I did these three. I really love yes. this. This is, um, Trey Liz, who's from Greece. She's Greek. And this is just a nitpicks, but I just love the like little pops of sparkle in here. What's the one um, below the, so in your left hand, so below the two from me, it, on, the, on the strip you said you just knitted, it kind of looks, it reminds me of like a night sky or something, the darker one. If you keep this going one? back. This one? Keep going that way. This? That one that's on your, underneath your hand. This. No. Wait, on the end. my hand? Okay. That one, that one right there. Yeah. I love like this one thing. too. This was um, a mini skein that was gifted to me from Dragon Horde yarns. I love her dyeing. Um, like I don't star in the night sky. It's That's what so it reminds beautiful. Me. And the blue is so rich. It's just gorgeous. Um, yeah, I don't have the name. I don't know, but it's Dragon Horde. I was like, my eyes immediately went. <sighs> yeah, Dragon Horde yarn. Um, she's got really great stuff. And she's a very nice person also. Um, yeah, 
but this like dark, deep dark blue is uh, like what our duvet cover is. So this goes on top of our duvet. So it's like the dark blue, the deep blue is really, this is also a really nice deep blue. Um, so pretty. I love the mix of colors you've got going on. Thank you. Pretty. So um, that brings me to my next point, which is when I was thinking about what to talk about about this again, there are a couple of things that have really helped me uh, with just like keeping the project moving along. Um, and one of those things is like choosing a color palette and sticking to it, which is not something I did at the very beginning because, you know, the whole idea of this is like, it's a scrap blanket, you use your scraps. And I was doing that in the beginning and then it just was like this huge mishmash of things that I wouldn't like necessarily want to go anywhere in my house, you know? And just because I'm a, I'm a designer, I'm a graphic designer for anybody who doesn't know. And like, so I'm picky, you know, and it's like, I'm okay with that. You know, it's like, I don't care. I like what I like and that's fine with me. And it makes me happy to like see beautiful things. And so- um, That's whatever. your house, your space. Like. Exactly. So, um, so what uh, I did this, I started getting really into knitting and I started getting really, I started this blanket like three years ago. Uh, started getting into knitting, started getting really involved with the knitting community. And I started working for Krista in Bull and Vine Yarns and um, sort of acquired all of this yarn from her and other people. And like some of it I purchased and some of it was free. A lot of this stuff is from older projects. Um, some of it I dyed myself. This one, this one I dyed myself. So cool. Um, pretty as well. Thank you. And um, so then, so that happened. And then I did, I went through this whole thing where I was like trying to find my personal style. And part of that was like figuring out what my skin tone was, like whether it was cool or warm or neutral. And um, I, this is like the thing where my camera goes. Um, Okay, I was like, sorry, no. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Um, so for a long, I I have fair skin, and for a long time, like a lot of people who have fair skin are cool, have a cool undertone, and you're supposed to like match. So there's the hue of the color, which is like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, but like there's no such thing as a true. Um, true red or a true blue or a true yellow. So a, a true primary. Every color is made up of more than one color. And so you can have a blue that's got a little bit of yellow in it and a blue that's got a little bit of red in it. And so like the blue red makes like a little, like a blue that's a little more purple and uh, the blue yellow makes like a kind of a teal. Um, and even what you think of as a true blue, like our true primary has like a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of one or the other. Um, so that effect is called the undertone of the color. And so you, um, if you have, you know, and your skin is made up of all different colors too. So like if you have a warm undertone, you want to stick with colors that also have a warm undertone. So that means that you can wear any color, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, but like if you wear red and you have a cool undertone, you want to wear a red that's like slightly more blue as opposed to a red that's slightly more yellow, orange. Yeah, so it would be like a, you know, um, so I think I'm explaining this correctly, but it's, a kind of difficult concept for a lot of people. So please feel free to ask me questions if you are confused. So anyway, for a really long time, I thought that I was a cool skin tone. And then even like 
you know, and then I would put on something that was like kind of a peachy pink and I'd be like, but this looks really good on me. Like why, you know, and like, if I'm looking at our screen, you're, you have a really warm skin tone. And so compared to you, I look like I have a cool skin tone, but then I would look at pictures of myself with Kristen, for example, and, or my friend Caitlin, and it had to be like the same picture, like not side by side, yeah. because, you know, color correction can really affect this. But like if Kristen and I were together and had a picture of us taken, I looked so much warmer than she than she did or Caitlin, my other friend. So I finally figured out that there's also a thing, a, such a thing as a neutral, you know, so I'm technically a neutral, which is like pretty rare. And um, most of the time people aren't neutral and it's like people are like you really think you're neutral or something i don't know so anyway i had all of this yarn that was like a cool undertone color because i thought that i was cool undertone and then i fi finally figured this out and i like started buying other yarn that like looked a lot better on me and that i felt a lot better in so i had all of this leftover yarn that i didn't feel like i would want to wear even though i thought that it was beautiful and so what happened was I, you know, decided to put that in my blanket. And at a certain point, I took this poster that I've had since I was 16 of the band Cake, who I love. Um, and there's like a bunch of um, contrary or complementary colors in there. So there's like orange and blue and yellow and purple and um, red and green, but they're very specific shades of all of those. And so I tried to take color inspiration from that poster and I used all the leftover yarn that I had. And some of them are full skeins, but I put all of those in a big bag. And so it's really easy to keep going on an epic blanket project if you have just like a pool of yarn that's like, these are the colors, this is like the mix that I'm happy with, I'm just gonna pick. And so like every so often I will pick from that bag and I will like line, put this on my bed and I'll um, decide what to do for like the next five squares and I will like lay it out and I'll take a picture and then I just like move that to the coffee table by the TV and I just like, you know, refer to the picture and I just I'm like going, going, going. So I don't have to think about it. Like I only think about it one time. You know, I feel like it's been harder when I, you know, just do one and then I'm like, oh, now I have to choose the next one because you really think about it kind of too much. It's like put too much thought into every single and that really stops the momentum. So anyway, I those are my tips if anybody ever wants to do a project like this, a scrappy project in general, but specifically this project. It's really fun. And those are the things that have helped me uh, moving along. I can't believe you're so close to finishing. I am so excited. I did this little um, like tracker chart thing, which I haven't really been keeping up with because Honestly, I finished them at the end of the night and the last thing I want to do is like fill in this little color thing. But like, so this would be the top of the blanket. So like, I just have this left and this goes down a lot, you know, but, um, but yeah. Oh, and I've wow. already done, I've already done that. And then I'm, now I'm starting on here. So. You're so close. I'm so close. 2021 is the year. Yeah, I think so. Um, the other thing, just to get it all uh, out, and then and then I'll let you do your do your stuff, is that I've been doing washcloths, um, which you know about. Also, I started doing these at the beginning of the pandemic. I was like sort of looking for something else because. You know, I knit a lot already and at the beginning of the panic, it was so stressful and scary and like I think we, a lot of us were sort of looking for something new to be excited about um, in terms of crafting and I eventually landed on cross stitch, but at first I was like I'm going to crochet 
like a bunch of little things and I did and it was fun for a minute and then I decided that I hate crochet for the second time I decided this I'm sorry I love the way it looks and I do I wish that I loved crochet I just don't like doing it I'm I respect you if you do I really do I really respect you but it's not for me um but anyway so I made these little um make eye makeup remover thingies and this little washcloth and this one and this one and these are all knit picks um lindy chain which is a linen yarn i think it might have a little bit of cotton in it but i'm not sure anyway so i had all of this yarn i decided i hated crochet <laughs> and i had this all this yarn left over and so I was like, I'm just going to knit some washcloths because I know how to knit. I'm really fast. Um, so I did. I just like took all of this yarn and I decided I was just wanted to use it all up too. Um, so basically what I'm showing these because I just finished using up all of this yarn. Um, and so I did it. This one's a little so cool. Wet. Please excuse the wet spot. Um, these are the colorful half and half washcloths from Knit Picks. And so this was, awesome. thank you. This was my train project for the past couple of months. I just, this one was the last, I'm not like super happy with this one, but this was like using up all of the really cool. scraps. This was like the last one that I knit. And it's been really fun because it like, I feel like it really elevates my bathroom, actually. Yeah, I was about to say they look really sort of artistic. I don't know, like little bits of art. They're sophisticated, one. I think. Um, yeah. And um, <laughs> so again, I like have this shower curtain that was purchased by my old roommate, Charmé, whom I love. And it's a map of the world and it's like, really uh pixelated so as a graphic designer again i'm just like mm, i don't know but i love the colors so much so these colors are inspired by that shower curtain and it's so like one of the unexpected like benefits of doing this is that it really elevates my bathroom like it really looks very sophisticated in there because i've got like some matching color schemes going on. So I'm really pleased with them. It has the added bonus of being like eco-friendly, handmade. Yeah. I really need to make some. I just oh, have, haven't, haven't. <laughs> have no excuse. Because I asked you for your collection on um, the website we both used for knitting stuff on which is Ravelry. Also, Ravelry <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the website it just escaped my head. I was like Emily send me your Ravelry collection of washcloths and then I haven't yeah. done anything. But I, yeah. I have cotton yarn I need to use up so I should just do it. I recommend these. I mean like I'm like I said I'm more of a knitter than I am a crocheter and I just like these knit up really fast and so cool. like I think they look I don't know, they're all uniform too. Like I'm clearly a better knitter than I am a crocheter because these are all like wonky and different sizes and like oh, I crochet. Like I can <laughs> I say I can crochet in the vaguest terms. Of, I like know, I yeah. can really think about it and I have to like refresh my mind of like every stitch it's until I'm so doing a bit. I just find it way more complicated. It's so confusing to me and I get really frustrated and I think it's beautiful. Like I don't just like crochet. I wish I liked it. I never have the right number. Like no matter what I do, I always seem to end up with a different number than they have in the pattern, which is why I've never made any clothes because I know it just would like go totally wrong. So all yeah, I've ever done really is hard like, to read and accessories. Yeah, it's really hard for me to like understand where I am in the pattern, like where the yeah. beginning of the round is and like where I need to put the, you know, and like I could figure that out if I had started out and like spent as much time learning to crochet as I did learning to knit, I would be a crocheter now, you know, but like, yeah, I just 
happened to go in a different direction and now I don't want to start over. <laughs> exactly. It's funny as well because some people are like, oh my god, knitting is so complicated. Crochet is so much easier. And then all the people I know who like massive knitters like, oh my god, crochet, like what is going on there? And yeah. knitting is so much easier. It's just funny, There's isn't it? So many different types of stitches and yeah. And also, like, sometimes the stitches aren't even on the chain. They're, like, at other points. I know. In, yeah. And they're, like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more free form, which is cool for, like, people who like that. Like, there are people who feel way too constricted by, like, the rules of knitting, I think. But, like, for me, that's, like, relaxing. Oh, like because I know where what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, and it's like easy for me to tell what I've done wrong, you know, if I do something wrong and like I was a bit like tensioning is easier in knitting, like crochet tension I feel is like never goes well for me. I don't know. Yeah, I th I'm amazed by crochet. Yeah. I maybe Maybe I, I mean, I have a crochet blanket, which I've kind of half started and then never. There's all those like flowers. Oh, and when I get in the swing, they're really fun. And like when you're in the swing, they seem quite easy. I mean, they're still never 100% accurate, but you can't really tell because it's a blanket. Yeah. And then I just go completely off it again. I'm like, I go, I mean, I haven't been on it since probably first moved before we moved to New York. So that was like, what? It's been a while, <laughs> and they've just been hanging around. Yeah, I pr and to be honest, I probably won't pick them up anytime soon. Yeah, maybe I'll make them into a bag. So, what have you been doing? Super quick, because it's not very big. I feel these stripes are really annoying. Anyway, I decided that I was going to leave my two long sleeve jumpers until I get closer to winter because that's when it's, it's not really the time for them now. I sort of got bored of knitting on them. So I'll, I'll pick them back up. I've left them because I know I definitely want to finish them. I'm just not into it right now. So I thought it's been a bit sunny, but it's still not that warm. Let me make a short sleeve jumper. So I'm making the Monica Gala tee from Sari Knits. Emily, you'll probably recognize this yarn because you helped me choose it. Um, so I got this in Brooklyn General. So I'm knitting it using the Farmer's Daughter's Fibers Foxy Lady Under the Big Sky. So Foxy Lady is the yarn. So it's 70% merino, 30% silk, and the color is Under the Big Sky. And it's beautiful. Like it basically does, as I say, it looks like a blue sky with clouds. And I realize that's probably the whole concept. And it's so soft. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. really pretty yarn. And even more excitingly, Emily, I am heli heli helical knitting. Helical knitting. I was trying to say helically knitting, but I don't know if that's the right verb. But yes, I'm using helical knitting. I reference back to our conversation and also watched the video from what were they called? Brooklyn Brooklyn Yarn? Is that what's the brand? Brooklyn Tweed. Brooklyn no. Tweed. They have Why is my memory that? failing this day? They have a video about yeah. helical knitting. They have a video. They do it in um, basically joggler stripes, but it's the same concept. Oh. So I know how to do joggler stripes as well. I was like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, how do you like yeah. it? Look, at first, my brain couldn't comprehend that I'm just like right. dropping something, slipping and picking up. I was like, this feels really wrong. Yeah. Am I doing it right? And I kind of was like double checking, double checking. And I said, no, Sophie, Emily said it'll feel really wrong at first, but it's right. So I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right. And if I'm not, I'm enjoying it too much to change my technique now. That's awesome. So yeah, loving it. So it's going to be such an easy knit because it's basically all stockinette. 
Um, so now I've got past the twisted rib. I feel like I'm whizzing through. This is literally just over the last couple of days. Don't you find ribbing just always takes longer than you think it's going to take? Yeah. I'm always impatient to get to the actual thing. Um, yeah, loving that. And then that's my knitting. I haven't been doing much knitting because I've been quilting. But I had exciting posts today, which I thought I'd share. My 52 Yay. weeks of shoes arrived, which I'll give you a little flick through. You've probably seen it, Emily. But oh my God, now I need to make a shawl. Let me show you just, I had a flick through it earlier and one immediately caught my eye, which I obviously haven't saved in any way, but it was this big, super snug one. This is really interesting. Watching Sophie flick through a book. <laughs> I feel like it was in the second section, 14 to... And I bought this, not because I'm a massive shawl knitter, but because I just really like their photography and I had to get 50 weeks of socks. And I thought this time I'll pre-order this. So it's not really hard for me to find. I saw a couple of Sorry to interrupt you. You go for it. Um, I don't know if I told you this, but I, um, this wasn't the one, but I thought this was really pretty. Oh, that's beautiful. Keep, carry on. Sorry. I'm just gonna, um, I have a new freelance job as a junior designer, um, for helping out a, um, book designer. That's amazing. Congratulations. Really, thank you. It's like, um, not many hours, so it's not like I'm gonna be able to quit my job at Brooklyn General or stop looking for work, but I'm so excited about it because books, I mean, books are so amazing. And when I studied graphic design in school, my last class was design history. And um, I didn't realize before the class started, but it's mostly about book design because I mean, that's, you know, like the invention of printing and uh, a lot for many hundreds of years, it was like primarily. Books. That's so cool. This is the one that I really like. It's super squishy. It's beautiful. Is that the same? It's different, a different one than what you just showed? Yeah, so this one's called Florence and it's got more of like little, um, like flowers like this with bobbles there was the one i really wanted to show you i can't find but there are so many emily patterns in here as well yeah, yeah. i'll send you photos we'll talk off this mm -hmm. um that's a, that's so cool have you started already yeah yeah um are you working kind of like within a team or it's just um me and her, I, she's a freelance book designer. She like used to work in publishing for many years and now is uh, like doing her own, has her own business. And um, it's kind of just like, I'm like her assistant, you know? So I'm cool. kind of like what a junior designer does. It's mostly like the, um, the stuff that the like the senior designer does the concept of it and the junior designer does like the execution of it so i've been working on um what's called a cast off which is like an estimate of like uh the printing cost so i take a, ma a book manuscript and i like count how many words are in each chapter and count how many images are um in the book and like whether they're half page full or full page images or smaller images and so it's like all goes into this spreadsheet that helps estimate how many pages will be in the book um because that's a huge factor in terms of print i mean that's like the factor in terms of printing cost so um 
So that's really helpful for the designer and for the um, publisher. And so I've been doing that. And then I also did a couple of um, social media ads, Facebook ads for a um, for her that she was doing a, for a publisher. And so she like designed them and gave me a template. And then I just like made a couple of them that are like, you know, similar. Um, so interesting. Like it's been so fun. And like, it's been so fun to talk to her because about it, because I'm just like, I mean, when I was a little kid, I was so into books and I was I mean, not just a little kid, like through all through high school and college, like I thought I was going to be a writer and I tried doing that for a little while, but I didn't really like it. And, you know, um, so this really sort of feels like it's coming full circle um, in terms of like, you know, who I am. And I was telling her, I was like, I'm, you know, feel very silly for being so enthusiastic, but like, this is feels like my fate and stuff. And she was like really sweet about that because, um, and she was like, yeah, it's been really great. Like everybody's so nice. And it's been just like getting a PhD in every subject imaginable. And, you know, which was really encouraging because I don't know if anybody out there or you have had this experience, but like sometimes you go into a field and like, it's your first job and you're really excited about it, but like the other people are jaded, you know, and they're like, and you go, oh my God, I'm so excited to like be here and working. And like, they're like, yeah, you yeah. won't feel like that for very long or whatever. And you're like, oh my God, that's, and so, I mean, to like be excited and have her be like, you should be excited. This is great. Was like really amazing. And I'm so, yeah, it's, it's a very small thing, but it also is like really feels really great because there's been a I mean, I've had a lot of personal loss this year and like, you know, nobody close to me has died of COVID, thank God, but like my cat died, like, you know, there's been some family yeah. struggles, like my uncle died and, you know, my other uncle has had a brain tumor, you know, it's like, it's been a really intense year. So like, it's just feels like a glimmer of hope. You know, I say do it, downplay it. Like, <laughs> I think it's like a huge thing. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. And it's kind of what you wanted. Like you've been yeah. hoping for it, but like just, you know, have a little part of the industry in some way. I think this is a great opportunity. And the fact that she's nice and enthusiastic like that's all just like an added bonus like that's yeah. so good. and that she's I was talking to some friends of Tim's uh, a couple weeks ago and telling them about this and the person I was talking to was like it's so great that she's like willing to teach you this yeah. you know because I feel like that's so rare too when you first start out in a career it's like you're in that terrible position where every job that you apply for wants you to have three to five years of work experience and like, no one will give it to you. entry level job. And you're like, how am I supposed to get three to five years of work experience? Honey, you're supposed to start in the womb. Yeah. And then carry on from there. Yeah. So yeah. like the fact that she's like excited to teach me about book design, which she has said, she like said in an email, I literally, I'm excited to teach you about book design. I'm just like, that's so because I'm so good. Like that's really good. Cause yeah. I feel like people want to keep it all to themselves. Like, they don't yeah. want to teach next generation things well, they know. They get like worried about the competition or they just feel like it's not their job or like below yeah. them. And it wastes like, time. Yeah. You know, which it's understandable, but like just to find somebody who's literally excited, not only just willing, but excited to teach me about the design thrilled I'm thrilled I'm so pleased for you thank you I can't wait to hear all the interesting things about book design as well I've never really yeah. considered that before it's really interesting um it's a lot about like um what happened I mean I don't know if everybody's interested in this but it's like it's a lot about what happened um in the very beginning of like printing and how those conventions have carried over and um 
into the modern day. Um, for example, one thing that I can think of, you may already know this because I know that you studied publishing, but um, type, um, there's like different words for font, font and type and letter form. So like a letter form is literally like the form of a letter. A font is like what the, it looks like and type is just also another word for like typed letters. Anyway, I didn't need to go into that, but like um, the reason we call uh, uppercase or like, what is, what is the other word for it? Like uppercase and lowercase letters, but there's- Capitals and- uh, Yeah, capitals and, and non-capitals. <laughs> They're, I think they're also called minuscules and majuscules. Yeah, but anyway, the reason that we call them uppercase and lowercase colloquially is because in a type foundry um, or like in a printing place before the, it was all digital, like you kept the majuscules, the big letters in literally the upper case and the minuscules, the little letters in the lower case. So like you, it would be a drawer, the ones on the bottom were like the lower case, you know, and I don't know. I'm so cool. I love learning like the origins, the little phrases like that. Yeah. So, cool. so it's a lot of that stuff. Um, like book design is a lot about how the printing, you know, how printing got started and why people did certain things and also, another example is the reason that we have um, like breaks in um, paragraphs, because that was not always the case. It used to be that paper was made from sheepskin. Um, so what we call what they called parchment was like sheepskin that was like stretched and shaved. And so that was, as you can imagine, really expensive. And so um, they would try to save as much space as they possibly could. And so, you know, when a thought would break, you know, or whatever, it, there was no visual break for it. And um, what made that start happening was during printing um, because things got a little cheaper to produce, reproduce as like the printing press was invented and as paper was invented that was not made from an animal. And um, we also have, um, do you know what a drop cap is? It's like at the beginning of a chapter when you have that like fancy illustrated- Oh uh, yeah, the big, first. like the monks used to do. Yeah, so that's called a drop cap. And um, there are like, you know, big fancy ones. And then there's also just kind of littler ones that are like less fancy, but still, you know, in the same spot. And so what they would do is sort of in this in between time when it was like transitioning between uh, scribes, so people who would just like, yeah. you know, hand write it all out and do the fancy lettering and printing, they would um, sometimes have like uh, the printer do all of the copy, like all of the regular words and then give the manuscript or the book to a letterer or a, um, a, there's another word for it, but a, a letterer or an artist who would do the, um, first letter by hand, the drop cap. And so they would leave a space for that letter to happen. And sometimes like out of laziness or miscommunication or whatever, it wouldn't happen. So that was how we got breaks, like paragraph breaks, which is just like mind blowing, I think. That is crazy to think like all these things have just happened through. Yeah. And now they're conventions. And yeah. like, if we, if you were to read a page and it didn't have paragraph, like, it would be literally harder to understand, you know. And what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. I think like book design specifically, but also graphic design in general, is so interesting because 
I mean, it's communication. Like it's like, it, and it's, people are so good at it that it's invisible kind of, you know, like we take it for granted, but it really helps us understand the information, like how things are placed on a page really makes a huge difference in terms of- Yeah, because like, you, like, you read in a certain way as well, like yeah. your eyes move in a certain way yeah. on a page and- Yeah. Um, it's like interesting to see how yeah. we did. I did a bit of it in my degree, but more kind of like from a literature perspective, I think rather than like publishing, thinking about that kind of stuff of like my whole um, dissertation was on like digital versus paper forms and how that affected like the reading experience. So less about maybe like layout, but even that like impacts a reader and how you process information and yeah. how that's laid out differently to paper and yeah yes it sounds really interesting that's cool well anyway we've gone way <laughs> off topic so i think that we should maybe continue this conversation off the screen but thank you so much for joining us um we'll see you in one month and i hope that you'll see me doing a floss tube uh in two weeks until then don't forget to take it slow so, love you bye Bye. Okay. Wait. Hold on. I just pressed end and not stop.